everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of the Rails API series. In this episode right here, we're going to be continuing off from the previous episode uh, and fixing up our user sign up endpoint. So let's take a look at what we have, and then basically we'll you know talk a little bit about what we need to achieve. And then uh, once we're done with that, we have everything working, then we're going to move over to doing the front end to connect to our back end to create that user. Um, so right now, let's take a look at what we have. Um, so I made the call from PAW, and basically we're getting this 500 error. So if we take a look at our terminal where our server is running over here, you'll see that we have, um, you know, it's saying that it's missing uh, the default URL options, and it doesn't know which host to send to. So what we need to do here in this episode is we need to configure a Rails app uh, with the default options. And in this case, I'm going to go a little bit further as well and configure a test mail server so we have a link um, you know, to work with. Like it will get a UI where we can run a mail server. And uh, yeah, we can access the mail server and you know, it will get the email and then click on the link. To, so we have the full flow working right here with our client and everything. So um, I'm the the client I'm going to be the the mail server I'm going to be using for test purposes is called Mailcatcher, and I talk about Mailcatcher in my Rails Foundation series. So if you haven't already uh, watched through that, go ahead and watch that. I'm just going to quickly uh, copy some config. I'm not going to explain very much, but we go into detail in the Rails Foundation. So if you want to learn more about that, go ahead and um, you know go ahead and and watch the Rails Foundation series. If you're a member, you'll already have access. Uh, because you know all our members get access to everything. Um, so uh, here we have the SMTP everything work uh, configured. So what I'm going to do is hang on, let me just uh, update this and uh, port. So we need to just uh, fix up a few things in here to make it uh, you know not show the errors anymore. All right. So uh, another thing we need to configure is config.actionmailer.default URL options equals host localhost 8080. So uh, let me tell you a little bit about why it's localhost 8080. Because in this case, this is the development.rb. So if you look at the up the at the file we're editing here, it's development.rb. So in in development, uh, our front end server is running off port. 8080, localhost 8080. Um, in production, we will probably have a separate uh, you know, server. So a little bit about deployment here is like this strategy for development you know, separates the endpoint, uh, the back end from the front end. The front end is, is running on a separate um, you know, server altogether. It might be just running on a static file server like GitHub Pages or S3 or whatever that it is that can serve static files. And so what you would do is in production, you would just point this to your um, your end, your front end endpoint. Uh, and basically, you know, the, the, the back end is going to send out the email to, you know, with the email message, you know, with that URL. So when the user clicks, they'll go to the front end server. The front end server makes a call to the API, and then we're good. Um, so yeah, uh, slightly added, uh, you know, adds a slight amount of complexity, but we'll survive. It's not that bad. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, close our server here, and I'm gonna uh, go ahead and you know cr call that endpoint again in Paw, and uh, I'm gonna boot up the mail catcher as well, so we can see. Uh, what's going on? So I'm gonna just go to So if you haven't installed Mailcatcher, uh, go ahead and install Mailcatcher. It's very it's a very simple gem install Mailcatcher. Again, more details in the Rails Foundation series. Uh, All right, so let's take a look at this. Um, we have already, um, you know, this is taking a while. This uh, installation. Uh, but I have already, um, you know, configured the mail server, so everything should be correct. So let's try out Paw while Mailcatcher is being installed. Uh, so I'm going to change this just a tad to like some number, um, and it's working now. Uh, we're getting 200 OK, uh, and you can see that the mail, you know, the mails, uh, the the Rails app has sent out an email to this uh, with this URL. So we can configure this URL later, or we can just keep this URL the same. And what we can do is make our front end endpoint support this 
URL. Now, the point is, uh, we don't need to implement the you know this particular endpoint on our front end server just yet. What we need to do now first, uh, you know, now we have everything working. It's running, returning 200 OK. Um, what we really need to do now is basically um, configure our front end to make this call instead of paw. Uh, because, you know, the user is going to be using this form here as you, what you're looking at here to sign up. So this, uh, the data from here needs to go to our endpoint, create the user, send out the email, and then we're good, right? So then we need to handle as well, like on a successful creation, what are we going to do? We're going to redirect them back to the the app where they can start creating content right away and then display an alert or whatever. We're going to need to handle that on the front end. So uh, moving uh, on from here, we're going to be focusing on a front end. So you can check out uh, the React Foundation. That's, you know, it kind of like goes together with this series right here. Uh, so with that, I want to wrap it up. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel uh, on YouTube. Uh, and uh, also, if you're already a member, thank you for becoming a member. If you're not a member, uh, it's just nine bucks a month and you get access to all our content and you will learn uh, a lot, like a whole kind of whole lot of stuff that, um, you know, that's upcoming, like the React stuff, the, the Rails API stuff and the, the Rails Foundation, the Docker stuff. So you get access to everything we have. With that, I'm going to wrap it up. I'll see you guys in the next episode.